Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Finally, well actually these watches have been out for close to a year now. I'm late to the party as usual. Finally, Seiko give us what we've been asking for. A classic watch from their Prospects dive watch range with the upgrades that mean we don't have to modify it ourselves. Those being a scratch proof ceramic bezel insert and scratch resistant sapphire crystal. All hail the King Turtle. Now, Merry Christmas to me. I bought this one at 10.30 in the morning on Christmas morning in a flash sale from a local Aussie retailer. I got a great price on it. I'll talk about price a bit later on. And I have been overall very, very impressed with what I received for the money. It's a Seiko though, so there is one question. Does everything line up? No, of course it doesn't. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. Okay, so I'm going to get into the box and then I'm going to start by talking about dimensions, specifications and what makes this King Turtle different from the regular turtles. I'm going to circle back around to price a bit later on. Now, if you have watched any of my videos before, you'll know that price is always an important factor. I think it is especially critical in this case. What do you get for your money? There's a huge disparity between the RRP of these turtles and how much you can actually buy them for. And then of course there is the regular turtle. You can still buy the regular turtles. They're quite a chunk cheaper than these King Turtles. What's the difference in price? What's the difference in specs? And is it worth buying a regular one and going DIY? Is there still a case for modding? All to be discussed. The reference, by the way, is SRPE 03K1 featuring the Caliber 4R36. No great surprises. It's the same movement as features in the regular turtles. Now, there is a J model available as well with a slightly different derivation. You're thinking, K model, this is made in Malaysia. That's why I had previously thought until I saw this rather instructive sticker on the case back. The movement may be made in Malaysia, but this one is cased in China. I don't care about that in the slightest. If it's a problem for you, you can always buy the Made in Japan. J model. And there it is. It's a good looking watch, the Turtle. I've always quite enjoyed them. I thought they were handsome, kind of strong, big watches, nicely proportioned. Now, the Turtle debuted in 2016, but of course, this cushion shape is classic Seiko. It can trace its lineage back through the 6309, back to the 6105 8110s, the Captain Willards from the late 1960s and early 1970s. So, what are the differences between this one and the regular Turtle? Well, we have got a different bezel here. Different markings around there. We have got a different dial pattern. I will pop in various bits of macro here. The dial, the closer you get to it, I think the better it looks. That kind of blocks of chocolate, grenade cross hatching, I'm not sure, call it what you will. And then of course, there is that rather controversial candy bar Cyclops covering the day date complication there. Lots of people don't like it. I'm a bit of a fan to be honest. I have got quite used to it, but this being a Seiko, is that aligned? Ooh, I don't think so. Anyway, let's talk dimensions before we get to those inevitable moans and niggles later on. It's a big one, just under 45 millimeters in diameter. However, Seiko know what they're doing. It is just over 13 mil thick with a very compact under 48. It's like 47.8 mil lug to lug. 22 millimeter lug width. There is a little bit of a taper down to 20, just under 20, back up to 21 and a half on the clasp. Sized up for me. Now I could do with removing one link. I've got it on the innermost of the four micro adjust holes. Weighed up for me, seven inch wrist. This one comes in at 191 grams. So certainly on the upper end of what I normally go for anyway, 45 and pushing 200 Gs. All stainless steel construction, full stainless case, crown, stainless steel bezel, stainless steel bracelet with solid end links. Now the clasp, you know Seiko, they've done a few favours for us. They have upgraded to sapphire and ceramic, but we still deal with that fairly crappy press clasp. So maybe we're waiting for the Super King Turtle to come up with a, a proper milled replacement. Now Turtles, they do have a built-in diver's extension. You just flick that. It's not the most robust one or the best machined one in the world, but it's there for you if you need it. And it is fairly discreet when the watch is on your wrist. It only adds an extra centimeter or so to the clasp. Case finish is typical Seiko. We've got a nice circular brush on the upper case. 
case, transitioning to a high polish on the side of the case and the lower case. Cushion case, as you can see, nicely angled. That's one of the reasons why it wears like a smaller watch and it wears incredibly comfy. A little bit of a cost saving exercise. They have an unsigned crown there down at the traditional four o'clock. Again, perhaps we're waiting for the Super King Turtle for a signed one. Now the bezel, I talked about that earlier on, different markings to the outer edge, nice and grippy though in operation and looks good under macro. Nice fine brushing, nicely machined, I like it. Now the bracelet, it looks like a nice decorated three link oyster, but if you flip it over to the back, you can see those are just single links, another little cost saving exercise masquerading as three links. And I'd forgotten just what a joy Seiko's pin and collar system is to use. It had been a while and it was a desperate fidget, but I got it eventually. It does look good though. Those nice little high polished edges to the outer links of the single link, if you see what I mean, they do at least add a bit of visual interest. And the clasp may not be technically quite as nice as a proper milled one, but you do get the Seiko stamped into the fold over, double security pusher, four levels of micro adjust, brushed top surface and a little high polished chamfered edge there, matching those high polished outer links. Now the bezel, I talked about the new patterning to the outer edges, it's not super aggressive but it is nice and easy to grip nonetheless. Good action, 120 click, unidirectional, rotating, no back plate, no bounce, a slightly deeper pitch to the click. If you can hear that, not quite as clicky snicky as some other Seiko bezels, but it is nice in operation. Does everything line up? Of course it bloody doesn't, I'll talk about it later. But before that, let's have a zoom in on the dial. Identical layout to the regular Turtles, the SRP777 and so on. But this time we've got that cross hatch dial pattern and applied indexes. Same pattern layout, you've got that triangular double baton at the top with teardrop singles at the six and the nine and circular indexes everywhere else. They do have a metallic, a brushed metal edge to them. Very nice indeed, matching the brushed metal handset. Now they've added a touch of color. I wouldn't say it was gold. It was kind of russet or ochre or something. The second hand and the divers 200 meter script that is printed above the index at six. We've got the Prospects X, automatic and Seiko also printed on, not applied, printed on but nicely printed considering there is quite a complex dial pattern to print on top of. Under macro it all looks very very nice indeed I must say. And it has a heap of loom. Now Seiko's Lumi Bright is well known, it's their own proprietary in-house loom. I've always thought it was kind of 8 out of 10 Lumi Bright though. I have included a Seiko in every single episode of Loom Wars, i.e. all 6 that I've done to date and a Seiko has never won Loom Wars. This King Turtle though seems to be a cut above the rest. Indeed, here it is compared to my box fresh J model Seiko SKX. I think the benefit of those applied indexes really comes to the fore with this King Turtle. I'm sorry I didn't shake the 7S26 enough so you see the SKX has stomped, but you don't need to wait for too much longer to see that the King Turtle is absolutely stomping over the SKX. Very, very impressive loom. I reckon it's the best loom I've seen on any Seiko so far, and before the Monster Crew chimes in, yes, that includes the Monster, I've reviewed several of them. Seiko standard screw down stainless steel case back with the Seiko wave in the middle there. Screw down crown, screw down case back, 200 meters of water resistance as noted on the front and it is a Divers Watch 200 so this one is ISO certified and you saw from the hang tag at the very beginning 4R36 day date complication in house Seiko movement in the back of this one. That'll do nicely, thank you very much. Normally these NH movements, the 4R movements, in my experience anyway, run slightly fast rather than slightly slow, but I'm not complaining, especially with a healthy amplitude and bugger all beat error. 24 dual hacking and hand winding autos, bi-directional winding, they have Seiko's magic lever system so they can't overwind them, and Seiko's deer shock system so they can take a knock or two. They're a bit of an engineering marvel. They run very consistently and very reliably for many years, and they cost next to nothing. Come service time, you don't bother, you just put the old one in the bin and replace it with a fresh unit. And on wrist, this thing has a stack of presents for a fairly ordinary colorway. You can get these in green and there's a Save the Oceans blue one as well, but I just opted for the plain black because that's what was on special. 
Really nice interaction between the sapphire crystal and that ceramic bezel insert. It's a fairly small, it's a fairly thin bezel insert. I think it looks really, really good in combination with that flat piece of sapphire glass. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. I normally go for smaller watches than this. This is just about on the upper edges of my personal limits, you know, 34 to 44. So this one is just a bit beyond that. But like I said, short lug to lug, nice and flat on the wrist, slim profile at 13 point something. Say know how to make a big watch wear like a small watch. And there we are, that's the overhead shot. I'm sure that will be a familiar look to many of you who have bought Turtles over the last five years. They've been a very, very popular model for Seiko and with good reason, they were good value and had that hacking and hand winding forearm movement from the very beginning. Does the value equation of this one stack up with those extras? Oh, I'll tell you in a minute. I will talk about price just after I show you a few more outdoor shots of this one. It does look very good in natural light. I think the sapphire and ceramic combining nicely. On wrist, it's a big boy, but short lug to lug it sits flat if you're okay with that 190 gram weight so price then for this black dialed model on the bracelet 625 us dollars is the rrp slightly less than that 599 for the rubber strapped variants however if you have a quick look on ebay and i'll leave links in the description of the video under $400 for the rubber and not much more than that for the metal ones. That is a saving of over $200 on the RRP or about a third off the RRP. And that disparity is even bigger if you're in Australia. 999 is the Aussie list price. I would not be recommending you pick one of these up for a grand Aussie. I paid 550 Aussie for this one in a flash sale from an authorized dealer, three year warranty. 400 USD, 550. Aussie, I think that's a very fair price for a Seiko with sapphire crystal, ceramic, in-house automatic hacking and hand winding movement, decent bracelet, nice build quality overall, and a very comfortable and wearable, if slightly large for me watch. But what about the regular turtle? I would probably be paying 350 for a regular turtle from that same retailer, so there's maybe $200 Aussie dollars difference between the king and the standard. Again, if we're back on eBay in US dollars, you're looking at under $300 for the regular turtle. So maybe there's a hundred USD disparity between the regular turtle and the king. I think that means this king stacks up very nicely indeed when compared to buying a regular one and modding it yourself. You're probably looking at $40 for sapphire crystal, $40 for ceramic, and then the cost of the tools and the labor and whatever. If you're doing it yourself or if you're getting somebody else to do it, it's gonna cost you even more than that. I would be opting for the factory mods rather than doing it myself. It's like buying the 1.6 and then slapping on your own turbocharger when you can buy the turbocharged version from the manufacturer. So good value then, but I am going to complain about a few things. Unsigned crown, press clasp, and the full three link bracelet all point to the fact that as much as they have made some upgrades for this King Turtle, there are still some notable cost saving exercises. And then there's the alignment. That chapter ring is just nowhere near 12 o'clock today. And whosever job it was to stick on the Cyclops, not only have you put it on too far down, but it's also sloping left to right. And it isn't super obvious to the naked eye. I only spotted it after a week or two of ownership. Quite clearly visible under macro though, there's a large fiber between the index at six and the index at seven. So Seiko's quality control still not up to snuff. But despite my moans and niggles, I still think this King Turtle is good looking and good value. I really do appreciate the changes that Seiko have made for this King Turtle model. They've clearly been listening to somebody. It's a subtle but appreciable upgrade for the ceramic bezel insert. And I love the fact that it comes with sapphire out of the box because I have scratched more than one piece of hard lex crystal. The Cyclops, that's gonna be controversial to some. I don't mind it at all. I just wish they had aligned it properly. In fact, there are a number of QC issues that I wish Seiko would get on top of. Size wise, it's wearable, but it is on the upper edges for me. There's an easy solution for some of that though. You pop it on a silicone strap instead. Drilled lugs here make it super, super easy to take the bracelet off and to put one of these on. That drops the weight to 117 grams while still retaining a bag of presents from that big cushion case. I know they've done it to the Samurai as well. They've done a King Samurai. I wish they would do it to the Mini Turtle. I would love a King Mini Turtle. Will this one be hanging around in my collection? Well, it does have a bit of competition because I picked up a sumo from the same shop a few days later. It was a rather expensive Christmas. 
So there you have it, the Seiko King Turtle. If you can find one at a good price local to you and you're okay with some of those styling idiosyncrasies, shall we say, most notably the Cyclops, then you probably should pick one up. I think it's a great watch for the money and I think it ticks a lot of the boxes that the standard Prospects dive watch range does not, especially the Sapphire Crystal and the Ceramic Bezel Insert. And frankly, I like the look overall. It works for me. It is quite large though. I hadn't bought a turtle up until this point and it's okay, it fits well. Seiko do that short lug to lug thing nicely. I am much more comfortable wearing it on a silicone rubber strap than the full stainless steel bracelet that it comes with because it does make the watch look and feel a lot lighter on the wrist. I just wish that for once they could get the alignment issues sorted. Thanks for watching. I will see you in a future video.